In this video, we will do some examples where we show a limit does not exist algebraically. So let's begin with the following. Let's show that the limit as x comma y approaches the point zero comma zero of the function x minus y over x plus y. I wanna show that this limit does not exist. Okay, so this problem is telling me what the answer should be, d and e. It's just a matter of how do we show that? Okay, so the first thing that it's always sort of good to do as just a check is, as we would with a limit of a function of one variable, try plugging in the point and see what happens. So if we plug in zero, zero here, we'll end up with zero minus zero on the top and zero plus zero on the bottom, which is zero over zero, and that's an indeterminate form. So sometimes indeterminate forms exist, sometimes they don't exist. So this problem tells me that this one should not exist and we just need to show why that is. Okay, so to do this, let's try approaching the point, in this case it's zero, zero, from different paths, from different paths. Because as we saw in the last video, to show a limit does not exist, we just have to find two paths along which the limit is different. Okay, so let's, let's try this. So let's take path one. So for path one, I'm gonna go along the x-axis. So I'm gonna approach the point zero, zero along, just straight line along the x-axis. So when I do that, I'm gonna let y be equal to zero. Okay, so drawing a picture of just my x and y axes. So x-axis, y-axis. We are letting y be equal to zero, which means we are on, we are on this x-axis and we are approaching the origin just along that x-axis. Okay, so if we do this, we end up with the limit as x comma, so I'm letting y be zero, so I'm gonna write zero where the y is. So I'm letting, I'm, I'm taking the point x comma zero and letting that approach zero comma zero. And now in my functions formula, Anywhere there's a y, I'm gonna plug in zero. So I'll get x minus zero on the top and x plus zero on the bottom. So I have x over x and that just simplifies to one. Okay, so when we approach the origin along the x-axis, the limit that we're getting is one. So now maybe let's try approaching it along the y-axis. So I'll call this path two. So path two, let's go along the y-axis. So along the y-axis, we would let x be equal to zero. Okay, so if we did that, now we're on the y-axis here and we're approaching, we're approaching the origin. So now I'll have the limit as, so where the x is, I'm gonna write zero. Okay, and then I'll have zero comma y. And the point zero comma y is approaching the origin, is approaching zero, zero. All right, and now in my formula, anywhere there's an x, I'm gonna plug in zero. So we'll get negative y on the top and y on the bottom. And that simplifies to negative one. All right, and that's great for us. It's great that we got different values along these two paths. At this point we can say, thus the limit, the limit that we were trying to evaluate does not exist. I'll write D and E, it does not exist since we found two paths that yield different, that yield different limits. So for the limit to exist, it's gotta be the same along any path I take approaching my point. If I can find even two paths along which I get different values for the limit, then the, we say the limit does not exist. Okay, so this problem, I kind of got lucky a little bit. The, the first two paths I tried gave me different values. And so when that happens, that's nice. Um, but as, as we'll see in the next example, that won't always be the case. Sometimes we may have to try multiple paths before we find some that give us different values. All right, so let's look at part B now. So let's do another example. Now let's say I want to take the limit as x, y approaches zero, zero again but my function is different. All right, so what I want you to do first is pause the video, pause the video for two minutes, 
and try evaluating this limit along the x-axis and along the y-axis and see what we get. So four, three, two, one, pause the video. Pause it for two minutes to try this limit along those two paths, along x-axis and along the y-axis. All right, so hopefully you've done that. Hopefully you've paused the video for about two minutes to try this first. Okay, so first, it's always a good idea as a check to just plug in the value. So if we plug in zero for x and zero for y, we get zero over zero. It's an indeterminate form. Okay, so this problem said to show that this one's gonna be D and E. So let's try approaching along different paths. So path one, so maybe for path one, I'll approach along the line x equals zero. So that's along the y-axis. So if we do this, we get the limit. So I'm plugging in zero for the x. Zero comma y is approaching. Zero comma y is approaching the origin, zero, zero. Okay, and so now anywhere there's an x in my formula, I'm gonna plug in zero. So doing that, I'll get zero on the top, and on the bottom, we'll get y squared. All right, so looking at this, it's important to know that this zero on the top is exactly zero. This is exactly zero because we're approaching along the y-axis here, and to do that, we set x equal to zero. So we're saying x is exactly equal to zero, and that's what makes the numerator exactly zero. But the denominator, on the other hand, is y squared. And even though y is approaching zero, y is not allowed to exactly be equal to zero because we're not allowed to exactly be at this point that we're approaching. We can't be exactly at zero, zero. We're just close to it. All right, so the denominator, the y squared, is close it's close to zero, but not equal to it. It's close to zero, but not equal to zero. So because of that, I have zero on the top and something non-zero on the bottom, and that is equal to zero. All right, so that's my first limit along this path. Let's do a different path now. Ah, let's put this in blue. Let's take path two. So path two, let's go along y equals zero. So y equals zero, that's along the x-axis. So I'll get the limit as x comma zero, because now y is zero. x comma zero is approaching the origin, zero, zero. Okay, so I have a point, it's on the x-axis, and it's approaching the origin. All right, so now in my formula, anywhere there's a y, I'll plug in zero. So doing that, the numerator gives me zero. The denominator will give me x to the four. And for the same reason as in path one, this limit is zero because the numerator is exactly equal to zero, but the denominator is close, but not equal to zero exactly. So that makes this whole fraction just become zero. All right, so looking at these two values that we got, we got zero for both of them. And based off of that alone, we don't know whether this exists or doesn't exist. It might happen that there's another path out there that I haven't tried that gives us a different value. So we have to try some more. Okay, so we've tried along these two paths, along the x, along the y-axis first, and along the x-axis second. What if we try along a different line? What if we try path three? Just along some arbitrary line. Let's try along y equals mx. So a different line that's gonna go through the origin. It has to go through the origin because I'm approaching the origin, zero, zero. All right, so if I do this, I'll get the limit as it's going to be x comma, and then we're saying y is mx. So y is mx. And that's approaching 0, 0. All right, and now in my formula, anywhere there's a y, let's plug in mx. So that gives us 2x squared times y is mx. And on the denominator, we have x to the fourth plus, and plugging in for y squared, I'll get m squared x squared. So m squared x squared. All right, so... Simplifying this now, we have the limit. So we have the limit as x comma mx approaches zero, zero. And I notice that I can divide the top and the bottom by x squared. And if I do that, I'll be left with two mx on the numerator 
And on the denominator, if I divide it by x squared, I'll have x squared plus m squared. Uh, let's write that better, x squared plus m squared. So again, that's by dividing the top and the bottom by x squared. All right, so now let's try plugging in. So if I plug in now, so I'm plugging in 0 for x, x is approaching 0 here. I get 0 on the top. On the bottom, I'll get m squared. And that's equal to 0 unless m equals 0. If m equals 0, if my slope was 0, we'd be approaching along the x-axis. But we've already done that direction as well. And we showed that one was 0 as well for, for that limit. OK, so so far, we, we really haven't had luck finding two directions that work. Every single straight line path we've tried is giving us 0 for the limit. All right, so if that happens, when lines don't work, we can try approaching along different curves. So try approaching the origin in this case along different curves. So for example, try approaching along a parabola or a more general polynomial. So if a parabola doesn't work, maybe a cubic or a fourth degree thing. Or along maybe roots. Okay, so let's try maybe the most basic parabola that we can, y equals x squared. So this is going to be path 4. Let's approach along y equals x squared. All right, so doing that, we'll get the limit of x comma and y is x squared. So x comma x squared is approaching 0, 0. And if I plug in x squared in for the y, in my formula, we'll get 2x squared. And now for the y, I'm plugging in x squared. This is where y usually would go. And on the denominator, we'll have x to the fourth plus, and before it was y squared, but now for the y, I'm plugging in x squared. All right, so simplifying this, we have the limit of x comma x squared approaching 0, 0. So that just means my point is on the parabola, y equals x squared. So that point is approaching 0, 0. So the numerator of this is 2x to the fourth. The denominator, because when you, uh, when you do this x squared squared, that's x to the fourth. You multiply the powers here. So x to the fourth plus x to the fourth, that's 2x to the fourth. Okay, so that simplifies nicely, that's just one. But now, seeing that we have one for this limit, but for every other direction that we did before, we got zero, that's still two different values. Okay, so that's good for us. So thus, at this point, we get to say the limit does not exist. We get to write D and E. The limit does not exist since we've found two paths along which we get different limits. Okay. So if we find two paths along which we get different values for the limit, that means the limit does not exist. All right, so the question that I want to end with is, well, we've done some examples where we show a limit does not exist. How do we show a limit does exist? So for multivariable functions, generally, this is much harder. This is much harder for multivariable functions than it was for single variable functions. So that's when we first would have seen limits back in calculus class. Multivariable functions since, if we think back to how we did, how we evaluated limits uh, when we had indeterminate forms like zero over zero back in calculus, we typically had to simplify our expression. But with multivariable functions, it, they're a lot harder to simplify. Sometimes they, in fact, they just don't. Since they are harder to simplify.
then single variable functions. And there isn't sort of a nice analog of L'Hopital's rule for multivariable functions. That just kind of like always applies. There are certain special cases where there's a version of L'Hopital's that can be used for multivariable functions, but it's a bit more intricate, so we're not going to get into that. Okay, so how do we, how do, we do this then? So I'm just going to mention the technique. We usually use what are called epsilon delta proofs. Okay, so if you've seen epsilon delta proofs in calculus before, what you might remember about them is they're kind of hard. Um, and sometimes that is the case. Sometimes epsilon delta proofs can be challenging. But still, that's how we would rigorously show a limit is what it is. Okay, so in our class, we won't, we won't cover these epsilon delta proofs. We won't cover these. We won't cover these due to time, because I want to spend more time introducing things like partial derivatives, which we'll talk about in the next section. That's sort of a way to do a derivative for multivariable functions, and talk about things like how do we find a max or a min of a multivariable function. Okay, but if you were to take, say, upper division courses in math, um, you would see these epsilon delta proofs a, a lot more there. So if you are interested, I definitely encourage you to, to read through, you know, one or two of these in the textbook. All right, so in terms of our goals for this section, we have finished our last goal, which is knowing now how to show a limit does not exist.